In the linked video, we have already explained the basics of tolerances in detail. In this video, we take a closer look at ISO tolerances in the context of joining two components. This is referred to as fits. As a simple example, let us consider a ring with an inner diameter of 20 mm of tolerance grade H7, which is to be later mounted onto a shaft with tolerance grade G6. Basically, the corresponding geometries to be joined always have the same nominal size. The dimension specifications differ only in their tolerance grades depending on the fit characteristic. First let us briefly review the most important points regarding the specified ISO tolerances. ISO tolerances are described by the so-called tolerance grade. This consists of a letter and a number. For internal geometries, commonly referred to as holes, capital letters are used. For external geometries, commonly referred to as shafts, lowercase letters are used. The number in the tolerance grade, the so-called IT number for international tolerance, indicates the fundamental tolerance grade. This fundamental tolerance grade determines, depending on the nominal size, the exact dimensional tolerance, which is then referred to as the fundamental tolerance. The letter in the tolerance grade, the so-called fundamental deviation, specifies the exact deviations for the dimensional tolerance. In summary, it can be said that the fundamental tolerance grade determines the size of the tolerance zone, while the fundamental deviation describes the position of the tolerance zone. Now let us determine the maximum and minimum sizes for the hole and the shaft using the table book. First we determine the limit deviations for the hole. With a nominal size of 20 mm and tolerance grade H7, we obtain an upper deviation for the hole of 21 micrometers and a lower deviation of 0. The actual hole diameter must therefore lie between a minimum size of exactly 20 mm and a maximum size of 20.021 mm. Now let us determine the specific maximum and minimum dimensions for our shaft. With a nominal size of 20 mm and tolerance grade G6, we obtain an upper deviation of minus 7 micrometers and a lower deviation of minus 20 micrometers. The actual shaft diameter must therefore lie between a minimum size of 19.980 mm and a maximum size of 19.993 mm. For clarity, the deviations for the hole and the shaft, as well as the required maximum and minimum dimensions, have been summarized again in the illustrated table. In the following, the position of the two tolerance zones will be examined schematically. The tolerance zone H7 of the hole marked in blue starts at the lower deviation of zero directly at the nominal size. The reference line of the nominal size is often also called the datum line. The tolerance zone ends with an upper deviation of plus 21 micrometers above this datum line. Thus the schematic position of the tolerance zone H7 of the hole is as shown. Now let us consider the position of the tolerance zone G6 of the shaft. It starts with an upper deviation of minus 7 micrometers and thus 7 micrometers below the nominal size or below the datum line. With a lower deviation of minus 20 micrometers, the tolerance zone ends 20 micrometers below the nominal size. Thus the schematic position of the tolerance zone G6 of the shaft is as shown. The shaft must therefore always be smaller than the nominal size. Note that the height of the tolerance zone of the shaft is somewhat smaller due to the lower fundamental tolerance grade of 6 than the tolerance zone of the hole with a fundamental tolerance grade of 7. Furthermore, it should be noted that the tolerance zones are shown here only schematically and not to scale. In reality, the tolerance zones are usually only a few micrometers high. Based on the schematic position, we can now recognize an important characteristic of our fit. No matter the exact sizes we manufacture the hole and the shaft to, as long as we adhere to the respective tolerance zones, the shaft will always be smaller than the hole. The ring will therefore later be able to slide easily over the shaft. Such a fit that always has clearance is also referred to as a clearance fit. In the following, let us calculate the minimum clearance we will have and the maximum clearance that can occur. The hatched minimum clearance F min C is obtained when we manufacture the hole as small as possible as shown and thus at the minimum size while the shaft becomes as large as possible and is therefore manufactured at the maximum size. To obtain the minimum clearance F min C, we subtract the maximum size of the shaft from the minimum size of the hole. With a minimum size of the hole of 20.000 mm and a maximum size of the shaft of 19.993 mm, we thus obtain a minimum clearance of 0.007 mm or 7 micrometers. The shaft will therefore be at least 7 micrometers smaller than the hole. Now let us calculate the maximum clearance we can have. 
The hatched maximum clearance Fmax-C is obtained when we manufacture the hole as large as possible and thus at the maximum size while the shaft becomes as small as possible and is therefore manufactured at the minimum size. To obtain the maximum clearance Fmax-C, we subtract the minimum size of the shaft from the maximum size of the hole. With a maximum size of the hole of 20.021 mm and a minimum size of the shaft of 19.980 mm, we thus obtain a maximum clearance of 0.041 mm or 41 micrometers. The shaft will therefore be at most 41 micrometers smaller than the hole. The difference between the maximum clearance of 41 micrometers and the minimum clearance of 7 micrometers is also referred to as the fit tolerance and in our case amounts to 34 micrometers. The fit clearance may therefore vary within a range of 34 micrometers. Let us now consider the case where the ring with tolerance grade H7 is no longer manufactured with a shaft of tolerance grade G6, but for example with tolerance grade S6. In the reference book in the column for tolerance grade S6, we now obtain for our nominal size of 20 millimeters an upper deviation of plus 48 micrometers and a lower deviation of plus 35 micrometers. Both deviations are positive in this case. The maximum size of the shaft is thus 20.048 mm and the minimum size 20.035 mm. For clarity, we have summarized the limit dimensions again in a table. From the limit dimensions it is already apparent that the shaft with a minimum size of 20.035 mm will always be larger than the hole with a maximum size of 20.021 mm. The schematic position of the tolerance zone S6 of the shaft marked in red is shown in comparison to the tolerance zone H7 of the hole marked in blue. Based on the schematic illustration, we can clearly recognize an important property of this type of fit. No matter what specific actual sizes we manufacture the hole and the shaft with, as long as we adhere to the respective tolerance zones, our shaft will this time always be larger than the hole. The ring must therefore later be pressed onto the shaft with greater force. Sliding the ring on the shaft is then no longer easily possible. Since the size of the shaft will always be above that of the hole, such a fit is also referred to as an interference fit or press fit. In the following let us calculate the minimum interference we will have and the maximum interference that can occur. The hatched maximum interference Fmax-I is obtained when we manufacture the shaft as large as possible as shown and thus at the maximum size while the hole becomes as small as possible and is therefore manufactured at the minimum size. To calculate the maximum interference F max I, we subtract the minimum size of the hole from the maximum size of the shaft. With a maximum size of the shaft of 20.048 mm and a minimum size of the hole of 20.000 mm, we thus obtain a maximum interference of 0.048 mm or 48 micrometers. Note that in contrast to clearance, interference is usually given as a negative value. In this case, the maximum interference is not calculated as the difference between the maximum size of the shaft and the minimum size of the hole, but rather the other way around, that is as the difference between the minimum size of the hole and the maximum size of the shaft. The smaller value is subtracted from the larger one, and this automatically results in a negative value for the interference. The maximum interference is therefore minus 48 micrometers. Let us now calculate the minimum interference we will have. The hatched minimum interference F min I is obtained when we manufacture the hole as large as possible and thus at the maximum size while the shaft becomes as small as possible and is therefore manufactured at the minimum size. To calculate the amount of the minimum interference the minimum size of the shaft must be subtracted from the maximum size of the hole. However, in order to again obtain a negative value for the interference we reverse the values and subtract the maximum size of the hole from the minimum size of the shaft. With a maximum size of the hole of 20.021 mm and a minimum size of the shaft of 20.035 mm, we thus obtain a minimum interference of minus 0.014 mm or minus 14 micrometers. The interference of the present fit, therefore, lies between the maximum interference of minus 48 micrometers and the minimum interference of minus 14 micrometers. The difference between these two values again corresponds to the fit tolerance which in this case is 34 micrometers within which the interference may vary. Let us now consider the case in which the ring with the tolerance class H7 is no longer manufactured with a shaft of tolerance class S6 but for example with tolerance class N6. In the reference table in the column for tolerance class N6 we now obtain an upper deviation of plus 28 micrometers and a lower deviation of plus 15 micrometers for our nominal size of 20 millimeters. 
The maximum size of the shaft is therefore 20.028 mm and the minimum size is 20.015 mm. The limit dimensions are again summarized in the table shown. In addition, we have schematically illustrated the orange marked tolerance zone N6 of the shaft in comparison to the tolerance zone H7 of the hole. In comparison to the clearance fit, in which the tolerance zone of the shaft lay entirely below the tolerance zone of the hole, and in comparison to the interference fit, in which the tolerance zone of the shaft lay entirely above the tolerance zone of the hole, the tolerance zones now overlap. The present fit therefore exhibits characteristics of both a clearance fit and an interference fit. In one extreme case clearance results, in the other extreme case interference results. The ring can later only be pushed onto the shaft with increased force. Shifting or rotating the ring on the shaft may still be possible with greater force. Since the fit can result in either interference or clearance, it is referred to as a transition fit. Next, let us calculate, based on the dimensional limits, both the maximum possible clearance and the maximum possible interference. The maximum interference F max I occurs when the shaft is manufactured as large as possible, while the hole is made as small as possible. The formula used to calculate the maximum interference is the same as for the interference fit, again considering that interference is typically expressed as a negative value. With a minimum hole diameter of exactly 20.000 mm and a maximum shaft diameter of 20.028 mm, we obtain a maximum interference of 0.028 mm or 28 micrometers. Now let us calculate the maximum possible clearance in the opposite extreme case. The maximum clearance F max C occurs when the hole is manufactured as large as possible and the shaft is made as small as possible. The formula for calculating the maximum clearance is the same as used previously for the clearance fit. With a maximum size of the hole at 20.021 mm and a minimum size of the shaft at 20.015 mm, we get a maximum clearance of 0.006 mm or 6 micrometers. Thus, in one extreme, there is a maximum interference of 28 micrometers, and in the other extreme, a maximum clearance of 6 micrometers. The tolerance range in this case is 34 micrometers, within which either clearance or interference may occur. Note that in practice, neither shafts nor holes are perfectly round, and surface finishes are never perfectly smooth. This means that at some points, clearance may exist, while at others, interference occurs. This results in components that are difficult to move relative to each other in a transition fit. When looking more closely at the formulas for clearance and interference fits, it becomes clear that the formula used to calculate the maximum clearance is the same as the one for the minimum interference. Both formulas can therefore be combined. Whether the calculated fit results in a clearance or interference depends on the sign. A positive value indicates clearance, while a negative value indicates interference. The same applies to the formulas for calculating the minimum clearance and the maximum interference. These formulas are also identical and can be combined. Again, a positive value means clearance, and a negative value means interference. Depending on the combination of calculated fit values, the resulting fit type can be a clearance fit, an interference fit, or a transition fit. In a clearance fit, the tolerance zone of the shaft lies entirely below the tolerance zone of the hole. There is a minimum clearance and a maximum clearance. In an interference fit, the tolerance zone of the shaft lies entirely above the tolerance zone of the hole. There is a minimum interference and a maximum interference. In a transition fit, the two tolerance zones overlap. The transition fit can have both a small clearance and a small interference. Therefore, there is a maximum clearance and a maximum interference. Let's consider a small example. A 70 mm wide plate with tolerance grade H6 is to be fitted with a guideway of tolerance grade K7. The question now is, which type of fit applies in this case, without closely examining the position of the tolerance zones? To answer this, we first read the limit deviations for the respective tolerance zones from the tables and determine the maximum and minimum sizes of the plate width and the guide width. It's important to note that the plate, with its outer geometry, corresponds metaphorically to a shaft, while the guideway, with its inner geometry, corresponds to a hole. We won't go into detail on how to read these values here. Use this as a practice and look up the values yourself in the tables. Using the values from the tables, we get a maximum shaft size of 70 mm and a minimum of 69.981 mm. For the hole, the maximum is 70.009 and the minimum is 69.979 mm. Now, 
we simply calculate the values using the given formulas. The formula on the left, calculating the difference between the maximum size of the hole and the minimum size of the shaft, gives plus 0.028 millimeters. This is a positive value, which corresponds to a maximum clearance. Next, using the formula on the right, which calculates the difference between the minimum size of the hole and the maximum size of the shaft, we get minus 0.021 millimeters. This is a negative value, corresponding to a maximum interference. In total, we have a maximum clearance of 0.028 millimeters and a maximum interference of minus 0.021 millimeters. This means it is a transition fit. If both values had been positive, we would have had a maximum and minimum clearance, thus a clearance fit. If both values had been negative, we would have had a minimum and maximum interference, and therefore an interference fit. This shows how we can directly determine the fit type based on the signs of the calculated values. In the next video, we will take a closer look at the systematics behind the fundamental deviations represented by the letters within a tolerance grade for holes and shafts. We will see how the letter combinations result in different types of fits such as clearance fit, transition fit, or interference fit. Along the way, we will get to know two important basis systems that are used in practice, the hole basis system and the shaft basis system. Additionally, it will be shown how the dimensional accuracy of fits can be easily checked using special gauges called plug gauges and ring gauges.